Fans in Jacksonville, Florida starting to learn what Coop fans have known all along. Gardner Minshew can play football, led his team to a victory tonight. We'll have the highlights. Low temperatures this morning in the 40s for the second straight day, but as we head closer towards October, 40s and now 30s will be more commonplace in our forecast. The sexual assault trial against Dan Hargraves ended today in a mistrial. Now the prosecutor must decide if he'll retry the former Pullman police sergeant. We begin tonight with a new development in the sexual misconduct trial of a Pullman police officer. A Whitman County judge ruled a mistrial in the case against former Sergeant Jerry Hargraves. Good evening. Thanks for being here. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Jurors deliberated part of the day yesterday and all the day today before deciding they would not be able to reach a verdict. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley was at the courthouse today and brings us an update now. The fate of a former Pullman police sergeant Jerry Hargraves is in the hands of 12 jurors. Those jurors started deliberations yesterday afternoon, returned this morning and continued until this evening. They all told the judge they would not be able to reach a verdict, even if they were given a reasonable amount of time to do so. So the judge declared a mistrial. The jurors have been dismissed and are now allowed to talk to people about the case. I overheard a few of them talking to the prosecutor about why they couldn't reach a verdict. Some said testimonies did not match up. There were discrepancies with when the victim was in the patrol car, and they had more questions about the DNA found on the victim's clothing. They also wanted more information on cell phone locations that were presented as evidence. The prosecutor tells me it's now up to him to decide if he will once again pursue this case, a decision he said he may have by next week. Reporting from the Whitman County Courthouse, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Now to the growing concern over vaping. The CDC says the number of cases of vaping related illness now sits at 530 and eight people have died. The FDA now launching its own investigation. And with the vaping related deaths come a lot of questions, but state and federal health agencies are still struggling to find answers to go over everything we know and what we don't. Here's Creme 2's Casey Decker. Question one. What exactly is happening to these people? Usually they first feel nauseous or fatigued and often throw up. Then they start having respiratory symptoms like coughing or having a hard time breathing. If they go to the hospital, doctors try to treat them to varying degrees of success. But that's super hard because of question two. Why is it happening? That's not something anyone's been able to answer. The symptoms look a lot like an infection, but doctors aren't able to find any. And often this is happening in younger, otherwise healthy men. So that means it's likely some combination of chemicals affecting people's lungs. So question three, what kind of chemicals? That we also don't know, but there are some trends. Most of the patients were vaping with THC, the part of marijuana that makes you high. Many of them had also vaped regular nicotine e-cigs at some point. That raises a couple of possibilities. It could be a chemical found primarily in THC pens. Some doctors found vitamin E acetate in multiple patients, but many others did not. It could also be the result of combining chemicals from both kinds of vape cartridges, but not all the patients vaped with both. In fact, many patients said they had never vaped with THC, though that sort of reporting can be unreliable since people may lie about drug use, especially in places where marijuana is illegal. So right now the feds are warning against vaping, but the other firm warning is to never use cartridges or pens bought off the street. THC devices sold illegally are more likely to have been refilled or modified in a way that could make them dangerous. So question four, how do you protect yourself? Well, the best way is to avoid vaping altogether, but if you are vaping, don't jerry-rig your devices or buy them off the street. And question five, why is this just happening now? Well, one answer could be maybe this isn't new. Maybe we're just putting it all together now. But another possible answer, there could be some new combination of chemicals on the market. The bottom line is we still don't have hard answers and likely won't for a little while longer. Casey Decker, Krem 2 News. In the meantime, some media outlets are now changing their advertising strategies to help combat this vaping problem. CBS announced it will stop all future e-cigarette advertisements. CNN and its parent company have also agreed to do the same. New tonight, a Spokane Valley business received an unsatisfactory rating on a 2018 fire inspection due to several fire code violations. 
Fat Panda marijuana grow facilities made headlines last week when 80 employees had to be evacuated due to a fire. No one was injured and the Spokane Valley Fire Department said the business would be able to continue operating without closing. So the business had at least nine issues listed during inspections with the fire department. Violations included a sprinkler being too close to a wall and being behind an electrical conduit, missing electrical panels and improperly using ext extension cords in place of permanent wiring. Those are according to inspection reports. Krem did attempt to reach Grow Up Farms, which is the company that owns Fat Panda. We tried through phone and email, but have not heard back. On to weather tonight. The day started out gray and gloomy, but that gave way to blue skies and sunshine. It was actually really nice. So let's turn straight to meteorologist Thomas Patrick to find out if there's more on the way. Hi, Thomas. Yeah, it's been a very active week between the rain, the thunderstorms, the fog this morning. Once it burned off this afternoon, it ended up being amazing, but I will focus on the temperatures. We were in the 40s for the second straight day in Spokane, and it was down to 39 in Deer Park this morning. So yeah, burr, it's starting to feel a bit like fall out there. Now clouds will increase tonight, so that'll hold our temperatures right around 50 degrees or so. Might be a very off chance for a shower because there's a very weak weather system pushing through western Washington right now. Looks like the Cascades are so soaking up most of the available moisture, so it probably won't rain. Again, probably like a 5% chance for tomorrow morning to see rainfall, but that cold weather will stick around not just for the rest of this month, but certainly heading into early October. So coming up, I'll detail just how much colder we'll see those temperatures get as we head through that first full week of fall that in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Thomas. Thank you. Amazon now vowing to cut emissions to fight climate change. The company delivers more than 10 billion items every year using planes, vans and trucks. So to cut emissions, Amazon says it will now use 100,000 electric delivery vans starting in the next two years. It also plans to have 100% of its energy use come from solar panels by the year 2030. Meanwhile, Washington Governor Jay Inslee will stop in Spokane tomorrow. He is expected to join activists at a climate strike in Riverfront Park. This is video from a previous climate protest. More than 3,500 demonstrations will be held around the world tomorrow with 800 happening right here in the U.S. And young people also expected to be a huge part of tomorrow's strike. We talked with students in our area to see what their plans are, and many of them do say they plan to leave school in order to attend that protest. Each school district here in the area has a different policy regarding student walkouts. Most, though, do require parents' permission, but students should check first for the ex exact policy. All right, Minshew Mania in full swing in Jacksonville, Florida. Tonight, the former WSU quarterback led the Jaguars to a big win over the Titans. It was a fun game. We could hear Brenna cheering from across the room. She's joining us now live with a look at how Minshew played. Brenna. Guys, you can't help but cheer for somebody like Gardner, especially when he's picking up his first career NFL win. Gardner went 20 of 30 tonight for 204 yards and most importantly, two touchdowns in the 20 to 7 win. There's his first TD of the night. That came when the Titans fumbled the ball on a punt return on their own seven. The next touchdown came on the drive immediately after, and this one was a beauty. I mean, perfectly executed to DJ Chalk. Gardner didn't score another touchdown on the night, but he did have this amazing throw to Chalk in the third quarter and it ended up leading to three points. Maybe the most important thing of the night for Gardner, zero turnovers. Gardner's next game is against Denver two Sundays from now at 125. That game will be broadcast right here on Kratom. By the way, Gardner will be in Pullman this weekend for the UCLA game, so fingers crossed we get to catch up with him. Back to you guys. I think a lot of people are anxious oh to talk goodness. with him. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a good time, <laughs> yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, still to come here on Kremdu News tonight, solar panels in Sandpoint getting an upgrade. And soon they'll be producing even more energy. Tonight, the creator shares just what that means for the city.